Turn back to the book of Romans chapter 1 this morning. You know, in preparing for this message, and uh, I, I've just tried to keep on, on the things in the news, and that uh, reflects the condition of our country and the direction we're going in and the things that's happened. And, you know, I ran across the article this week, and I began to read it uh, with reference to gender identity in our country. And, uh, you know, now the option on the birth certificate is you can select Thabies. Thabies is the term. You don't have to select male or female. Uh, there's going to be options for, they call them Thabies. And up to the age they turn four years old, after they turn four years old, they can choose their own gender at that age. That's the age that science says that they're able to identify who they are. Now, this, isn't, this ain't in a foreign country, guys. This is in America. <laughs> this is the policies that's being signed and pushed through, and this is in reference to gender identity. Yep. Now, I don't have to. You can go read it, and this is a, you can see a new term out there. So I, I don't think, you know, I don't suggest you know burying yourself in that because I know where I stand. I know where my faith stands, and you can get wrapped up in all this new stuff, but I do suggest, you know, you sort of understand what's going on around you in the country. That's the uh, uh, point of these messages, uh, preaching on uh, a guilty nation, a guilty world, uh, is that we can get an understanding from the Bible of what's going on in our country today, because our Bible's re relevant to the time. I also read an uh, article this week. Uh, some of you may know her. I don't know her. Her name's Jojo. Uh, she is a, a preteen star. She's been a YouTuber. Have you not noticed that uh, most young people today aspire to be a YouTuber? That's, that's just a thing. And, and they aspire to be a YouTuber. And one of the things that's attractive, and I've tried to deal with this with my boys, is that they're seeing these young people. And just like with JoJo, she's a, little, a young girl that come on the scene, and she is an idol to a lot of young ladies. Uh, she has 63 million followers. I mean, she can post a song and get 900 million views on it. It's unreal. I mean, it's unreal. Her, her song speaks to the heart of your young ladies, and she speaks words of love and unity, and I'm there for your young ladies. But just like this week, as it come out in the news, now she's a voice for the LGBT she come out and said at 17 years old that she is a lesbian. And she was born that way. And this is in our local news. And I see, and it, it, guys, it concerns me. Because when I see 63 million followers, that LGBT said we have, had, we have got a voice with the young people right now. Yeah. We've got an ear. We got the ear of 63. And besides that, 900, there was one video, 933 million views. I mean, can you imagine what agenda can be heard through this music and all the, the bright colors and the unicorns and, and kids? I've seen kids hugging her of all ages and flocking to her concerts to hear her. I'm just saying we've got to be involved in our young people's lives to the point that we know who they're following and what they're listening to. Because it's, it's like aspiring. This young lady's 17 years old. She lives in a mansion, a mansion. She drives a BMW that has her, her picture on the hood, and it's all decorated. Who would, what young person wouldn't want that? You know, this is what they aspire to be. The world says you've got to be successful. You know, this is just a couple of the things that I picked up in the news this week, and I could spend hours uh, talking about the other things that was signed just in the 37 executive orders this week that was signed that's contrary to the Word of God. Right. Plain and simple, outright, we're not here about a particular uh, political party. We're out here uh, speaking the truth, and that, there's only one absolute truth, and that is the Word of God. So... 
just to get into your to the message today, we just want to share with you in this series of messages we've been thinking about her whole purpose is to understand the things that's taking place in her current society, her current culture, the things that's taking place in her world in light of, uh, of in, in reference to the Word of God being relevant and we find uh, the Word of God speaks to us about the current events that we are seeing in her country right now. We begin our study um, and I'm not going to go all the way back to the be beginning uh, but we shared with you that there was indications that of the wrath of abandonment in this nation and first being a sexual revolution or sexual immorality and that is when a nation becomes immoral or pornographic and I just simply pose questions to you and does that describe our nation and we shared with you that God uh, number two uh, step two in that process that God gives them over to vile affections that's women with women and men with men and we certainly I just asked you again do we see that in our current culture where the government endorses it the go government says it's okay where uh, pop culture says it's okay where the media is proud of these people and, and they're endorsing it the film in industry and the majority of the nation in which we're living in says that's okay so I'm just asking you the question, did that describe America? And I shared with you again that God give them over to a reprobate mind. And what flows out of this mind we found in chapter 1 and verses 29 through 30, 31. We found the actual things that flows out of this, this mind, fornication, wickedness, and covetousness. And I ask you to again, murder. I mean, is it not crazy how many murders we see just in in our society. Every week, somebody get murdered in Greensboro, High Point, Winston-Salem. Somebody's dying every week. You know, this is this, it's insane. And they're wondering, wondering why are we having so many murders? So we wonder, and then, the, the, of course, the, the grand murder of them all is that we murdered over 60 million babies. I mean, you know, uh, we, could, we could say that. And, and what, oh, just in Congress this week, uh, the guy put up a beautiful picture of a baby in the wound and it showed the face and the body very distinct in this picture. And he said to Congress, is this not a baby? <laughs> is this not a life? There is people that's fighting for this. They're fighting for truth. They're standing for truth. But at the same time, uh, you know, guys... <laughs> I just looked at some stuff this week in the process, and I don't want to get too graphic, but in the process of abortion, some of you adults really need to sit down and look at it when they actually use a vacuum cleaner and, and actually suck a baby out of the wound of a lady. Now, I'm trying to be too graphic, but it's, it's just about break your heart, guys. Now, listen. I'm not, I, but this is the seriousness of it. And so I just want you to, you know, you as adult, adults, I'm, I, you know, of course these are things I'll probably share with my boys at this point, but, uh, you know, these are definitely things we need to be aware of, and this is why we stand uh, for truth. So we uh, talked to you about how when God abandons a nation, and last week we, uh, we shared with you, uh, spent a lot of time when a nation suppresses the truth. And we was in verse 18, and uh, that's where I'm going to read from. I'm going to start out reading in verse 18 today. And we was actually looking at the verses from 18 down to 23. And I'm just, you can stay seated this morning. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness and that being said uh, we could say they suppress the truth by their ungodly and unrighteous behavior so last week we spent a whole whole we spent the whole service talking and it's worthy of spending the whole service talking about suppressing the truth and one of the ways they're going to suppress the truth is to silence the truth speakers and that's what we're seeing in our current culture today in social media and on the news networks they want to silence anybody that's speaking 
truth. And so that's very significant in this nation that has rebelled against God, this nation that God has abandoned. These are the prerequisites to the God abandoning this nation. Some of the things we've seen in verse 24 to, to 20, 31 is the results of God abandoning a nation. Now we're going back and see, looking at some of the prerequisites to that happening. Number one being we suppress the truth. And we see that in the latter part of verse 18. We suppress the truth. So we, the truth implies that we have the truth. And what, what, there's no better nation than America that's had, a, had the truth. We've had the truth revealed to us. Literally, in this part of the country... Uh, we have a church on every corner. Doesn't mean on every corner the truth is being preached, but we have a church on every corner. We've had men uh, pro proclaim the truth from, from our TV networks. We've heard great ministers of God preach the gospel. We've been exposed to the truth of the Word of God. And besides that, uh, I like what was revealed in chapter 2 in Romans here in verses 14 and 15. We have the law of God written on the heart. We have creation. Uh, we have creation that we see God, the truth of God. God reveals Himself in Psalms 19 and 1. He reveals Himself to us in creation. And we said it's to the point as in verse 20, we share the latter part so that they are without an excuse. We have, there's no excuse that we can stand before God and make that is, will hold any water with God. We have no excuse. America has no excuse. Uh, it doesn't matter what the Congress says. It doesn't matter what the President says. It doesn't matter what excuse they make. When they stand before God, they will have no excuse. And I won't either. When I stand before Him as His child, I have no excuse for the sins that I have committed, my lack of not serving him, my lack of not uh, praying, my lack of not reading the Bible as I should, there's nothing I can say when I stand before God. Uh, I just have to hold my head down and say, that, God, I have no excuse. And that's the way it's going to be. Because this nation has been revealed, they've had the truth revealed to them, but we have suppressed the truth. So number two we're going to start with today, we're going to talk about the, this nation and the rejection of the truth. And these next few points is going to be pretty brief. And we find this in verse 21. Verse 21. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So that lets us know that this nation, this group of people, at a, they're at a point in time, they know God. They know who God is. They know the truth of the Word of God. But they chose to not glorify God. They chose not to accept the gospel as being the Word of God, the good news that can save their soul. See, they've rejected the gospel. They've rejected salvation. They've rejected the, the work of the cross. But it will not change the truth of it. There's In this nation, you'll find a rejection. People look at you crazy when you tell them that a man died on the cross and that man's name was the Lord Jesus Christ and he's the Son of God and he was born of a virgin. They'll look at you like you're a fool. What are you talking about? What do you mean? He died for me? I don't need to be saved. I'm a good person. I don't need a Savior. I'm my own Savior. And this is what we hear in our culture today. This is what man finds. Man has find, found the truth in reason alone. And we shared that with you. God give us a conscience. He give you in embedded in the, who you are, who God created you to be. He didn't have to tell you it's wrong to steal a man's stuff. They didn't nobody had to tell you that. Inside you, the conscience God gives you says, it's wrong. It's wrong, and you know it's wrong. But in that in itself, so within the reason of man, God revealed himself. But you know what God did? They rejected it. They rejected it. They rejected the conscience and the good reasoning that God gave us and we was born with. God gave us the moral law. He gave us the law, but you know what? They choose when it says, thou shalt not murder, they choose to murder. 
They reject Him. They reject the truth that's written in the moral law. They've rejected God in creation. Time and time again. They reject. They want to explain. They have all these explanations for how this world was come about. How you was created. Or not how you was created. They want to tell you how you evolved to who you are today. So evolutionists has chosen. And they have purposely attacked creation uh, from the word of God from the very beginning. It's a battle. And this is what. And this is why I say it's hard. You can't say you need to trust all science. That's a foolish statement. You don't trust all science. I trust we listened to a, we listened to a, science, a scientist in Sunday school this morning. Now listen, he was way above me. I didn't understand a lot of that. But bless God, I'm, I'm so glad that God saved some scientists. And there is scientists. Ken Ham's group, Ken Ham's team at Answers in Genesis. I trust the creation uh, science that's there. I listen to it. I refer to it. Praise God for it because they can defend the gospel in a way that, and defend the word of God in, in a way and, and come across in a way that I, I, God didn't give me that knowledge. And uh, it's not, that's not making an excuse, but we have God revealed in creation and man has chosen to reject it. They choose to gl not glorify God in creation. They look at creation and they have an explanation for it, how it came to be, how this river was formed, how the Grand Canyon was formed. They have an answer for everything. But the whole purpose behind it is to reject God's plan. That's the purpose behind it. So this nation, there will be a rejection in this nation. Uh, man has expo been exposed to the truth of Scripture. And time and time again, we we it's been revealed to them the truth. And they've constantly chosen to reject the Scriptures. Notice what it says about this person in verse 21. And it goes on to say, because that they, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither they was unthankful. Have you ever seen such an unthankful generation? I don't know if you realize this, but we're living in a generation of entitlement. I'm serious, guys. I've never seen such a, an entitlement. We'll just stop right there. And this unthankful heart. And, and, I, and that's something we need to cultivate in our families, guys. I want you to, you need to work on this in your families. And I got to work on this. Me and mom has to work on this. Cultivating a thankful heart for where God's place to set. For whatever we're going through. The ups and downs. And giving God thanks and glory in all things. And that's what Thessalonians tells us. It says that we should be thankful. Constantly thanking Him for all that He's done for us. So we see this in our current culture in these millennial generation in this nation they feel I'm entitled to everything I'm entitled to first to be successful I'm entitled to a big home I'm to entitled to a great life I'm entitled to a great job I'm entitled to all this that's the constant thing that I keep hearing. You hear it in their conversation you hear it when they talk I hear it in the voice of our politicians I just got to reading a bit an article, and when one of our politicians, I don't know who the lady was, she's one of the ladies in the Congress, and, and all you heard through the whole thing was, I am entitled to a prosperous life. Right. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. I, you know, I see people all the time. I've met, I met person after person that, look, they struggled their whole life. They never had a whole lot. They grew a garden out in the back and they canned their food. And they worked hard and they went to church and they served God and they tried to witness. They didn't have a big house. They didn't have a lot of money in the bank. They didn't draw enough when they, when they retired. They didn't even draw enough to even cover their monthly medication. But God, they was thankful. I mean, they just had a thankful heart about them. And, and it, man, I think about those individuals God's placed in my life over the years, just like my grandma. <laughs> you know, and she always had a thankful heart, man. I mean, she lay there day after day and couldn't get up and suffered for years before she died 
But I never went down there. She was never hard. She didn't complain. It's let me get up and let me get you something. I come in here and get you a drink. Sit down at the table. I got a cake for you. You know? This thankful people. Grateful people. It was the joy of her life just to be able to, uh, we'd help her out to the garden and her just to be able to sit there and look at it again. She couldn't get her hands on it, couldn't work in it, but she just had a thankful heart. And we're, grow we're raising a generation that feels like I'm entitled to everything. So do we see this in our, in our nation, this rejection of the truth? And I am entitled, this entitlement we see in our nation. And notice what it says that you go on. They're unthankful in the scripture, but became vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart was darkened. And I think this is what we see in the nation today. We see darkened hearts. Because out of that dark hearts becomes all of this dark speech. I see it all the time. We've seen it in our culture. Their, their foolish heart has been darkening. Their reasoning is darkened. It, they have a hard time even reasoning and seeing what the truth is anymore. And they've turned, they begin to believe a lie. They can no longer think as God intended for them to think. They literally, their mind has been darkened with this thinking because they've been ungrateful. They glorified God not. They chose to reject Him, reject reasoning, reject the moral law, reject creation, reject the gospel. So at that point, God turns them over to this type of thinking, and this spiritual darkness all around them. And we wonder why they're spouting out all of this foolish stuff out of their mouths. It's because their heart has been darkened. It's fool, this foolishness. It's foolishness now. And that's what we're hearing coming from this current culture. Look at verse 22. Number, number three, they rationalize. They rationalize. We all do this at some point, but this is uh, verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I, I think this is probably the most educated generation I've ever seen. You know, college has become the most significant thing to do in our society. You must have an education. You must have an education. What does a truck driver make up at your work, Mike? 100000 a year? Truck driver. We're teaching our young people, oh, no, not them jobs. You want an education job where you can go sit behind the computer, do something in the office today. No, you don't want to be a plumber. You don't want to go out and be a welder. You know, you get dirty doing that. We see, we see a nation here, and, and they profess themselves to be wise. Over this, uh, in this society, all in this society, they justify their actions by being morally correct. They, they make excuses. They profess to be intelligent and smart. They profess to be scientifically correct. You know, I, how many times have I heard this year, trust the science? Trust the scientists. Trust the scientists. Trust science. I've heard this so many times this year. Trust the science. And I'm saying, what science? Do they, is, it, are they, are they, is the science in light of the Word of God? You want me to trust something other than the Word of God? You want me to trust the science, right? That's what you're saying. Let's be a little more specific about that. And that's all we've heard. But what we see in this society is that they're educated to the point that their intelligence exceeds that of God. They think they're more intelligent than God. Now, literally, I watched Life 2.0 just to see what it was about. I had to check this out. So, literally, we've got this thing figured out. This earth is going to be destroyed, okay? It's going to be destroyed. But right now, we have a warehouse. It's full of every seed in it that is on this planet is in that warehouse. There's cryo chambers with samples of every kind of blood. There's cryo chambers with all kinds of other stuff they can't mention. But there's just full of, they've got all these samples, and they're down, they're down to the size of a straw. And they're put in there, and they're kept them. This is the plan. So the earth is going to be, climate change is just going to destroy everything. Y'all have heard this, right? We're going to destroy everything. So that's why it's significant we've got to have a colony on Mars that's self-sufficient. So we can fly up to Mars and we can hang out at Mars while the earth always replenishes itself. So it'll come back to a normal atmosphere at some point. We'll fly back to Mars with all our samples and all our seeds and we'll start humanity over again. 
Science has it figured out for us. It's all planned. I'm saying this sounds that sounds silly. No, that's on your public TV. Look on PBS. It's on there. You know, this is science. You say, well, okay, you want me to trust that, right? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you better look at it in light of the Word of God. We always do this because they, what they do is rationalize. You'll see in that culture that they are so educated that they have their PhDs and then they pat themselves. Now, I'm not saying all people. I know some good Christian people that, that are in positions and they, they, I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them, this is where it comes from. They have their PhDs and they pat themselves on the back and they spout out great wisdom, of the great wisdom of men and they disprove and rationalize everything that the Christian community says. Oh, no, it's not that way. The creation didn't happen that way. It happened like this. You evolved from a monkey. That's where you came from. And they spout out all of these words. And listen, it sounds convincing. But what the Word of God tells us in verse 22 is that they professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, that's not me. I didn't call them a fool. The Word of God called them a fool. And if they view the Word of God as foolish, if they view creation as foolish, they're fools. They're, they're educated fools. Now, you're saying, well, you're being mean, preacher. No, I'm not being mean. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. They profess themselves to be wise, smarter than God. But God says they're really foolish. They're all foolish. So... Do we live in a culture, do we, does this sound like our nation, that we rationalize all of our actions? We rationalize what we believe, and it's based on our own wisdom. And, and this is not the first culture. It's not the first culture that's been brought to their knees because of these same things. This, Remember, this is a prerequisite to what's happening in verse 24. This is when God says, hey, I'm done with you. You want to rationalize? You think you're so smart? You think you're, you have all the wisdom? And God says, well, I'll just turn you over to the fruit of your own labor. And that's what we're seeing in our culture today. What are some of the lies that we believe? And think about this. What are some of the lies we believe? This is some of them I've heard. Life is random. We are all are products of chance. Don't tell me you ain't heard that. Life is random. We are all products of chance. But the Word of God says God is sovereign, sovereign and nothing is random. I'm not no mistake. My life isn't by chance. Things don't happen in my life by chance. They're ordered by a good God. Whether bad or whether good, it's all for His glory. So we hear this lie in our culture, life is random, and we are all products of chance. Truth is relative. It's a good one. Truth is relative. And that, so what does that mean? That means if John believes there's a God, well, that's good for John. But I believe there's not a God. And that's good for me. That's exactly, that's relative truth. Truth is relative. It's relative to whatever you want to believe truth is, okay? It's, your, it's based on your own wisdom, the wisdom of man. So these are some of the lies we're being told in our society. The truth is the Bible, and it's absolute truth. You see the difference? We've got to have an absolute truth, and it can't be mine. It's got to be a God in heaven uh, that knows all, that created all, and spoke this world in existence, and He formed me in the womb of my mother. Right. That God. Right. My life is not by chance. It was ordered by God. He is in full control. You see the difference? Truth is not relative to what you believe. People are basically good, and someone else had to be to blame. Have you not heard that? It had to be your mother's fault. It had to be your daddy's fault. Somebody else is to blame for what, the way you are. Did you know that? I mean, I hear this all the time. People get on there and blame. He blamed them for this, blame this and for that, blame my situation for whoever. But the Bible says, it tells us, all people are basically sinful. That's who we are. We're sinners. Saved by grace if we've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. 
What did the, what did, we learned in Genesis this morning? We learned in Genesis. I'll, I'll, I'll go back if you didn't hear it this morning. Verse 21, it says, Man's heart is evil from his youth. Right. Right. Brother Cole read it this morning. Man's heart is evil from his youth. That's what the Bible says about man. Right. You know, everybody's basically good people. So, for everyone, everyone has the power to change his own life. You can be anything you want to be. <laughs> no, you can't. I hate to tell you that. No, you can't. You know what? I can't sing. I'll die not singing. I mean, I, I, seriously, you could give me some singing lessons. I might get a little bit better. I but I'll never be able to sing. You know? Yeah. I mean, I see you saying that for me, Paris. I, was gonna <laughs> I don't think that ain't meant fit right there. But, you know, that's okay. I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And we, but, you know, I, I'm mistakenly, you know, I, we tell our kids, and, and a lot of times it sounds, we're feeding them the world's philosophy. When we should be say, telling them and telling them this and this, you need to, you need to pray and, and be the man God wants you to be. Yeah, yeah. The Bible teaches only Christ can change your life. Amen. Yeah, you see, what I'm, you see the difference though? The world's telling you, oh, you can change your life. You can be anything you want to be. The Bible teaches, no, you can't. There ain't but one man that can say, change your life. There's only one person, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can change your life because man is sinful. You remember, we've got to go back to who we are. We're basically sinful. The only difference and only good in us is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, our righteousness is what? Is that a filthy rags, ain't it? You see, the teaching of the Bible is contrary to the Word, ain't it? The world. So we see also, the goal of life is self-satisfaction. Mm -hmm. To me, uh, you just need to accept. And, and this is what they say. The goal is self-satisfaction. This, this is who I am, and you just need to accept me for who I am. Right. That's what they say. You know, this is who I am. I, I was born a girl. I was born a girl, but I'm a man now. And you got to accept me for who I am. The Bible teaches selfless submission to Jesus is the goal for life. That's her goal for life. Selfless submission is the goal for, to Jesus is the goal for life. The goal for the people in this world is self-satisfaction. It's all about me. It's all about uh, who I am, what I want, and that's what you see. You know, and, and these, I tell you, this YouTuber society, uh, they're, man, our young people are seeing this, man. They're driving $100,000 cars. Man, and, and who wouldn't want that? that the, the, the me, the self-satisfaction, the flesh, yeah. yeah. Who wouldn't want to live in a million-dollar mansion? Yeah, I want that. All you got to get on there and just talk for an hour on a YouTube video and go over the video game and say, I put blocks here and blocks there. And you run around and play tag on there and, and do this stuff here. And you laugh and say, woo, we're having a big time. And boy, I want to do that too. Make a million dollars. You see, it's, all, it's about me. It's what, what I want. That Jesus, is, Jesus is not in that picture. You see that? Yeah. So, does this sound like the nation we're living in today? It sounds like the nation we're living in today. I mean, is that pretty descriptive of the nation we're living in today? And he finishes up in verse 23. And so are we. Verse 23 says this. And he changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like a corruptible man to birds and four-footed beasts and to creeping things. One thing you'll see in this nation is, is religion. Religion. That's right. Religion. And there's a difference. When I say religion, I'm not talking about true Christianity. In this nation here, we see uh, uh, they change the glory of God. They change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image uh, made with hands. So this true God, uh, they, they like to, this is what they do. Man creates their own God for their own useless ideas. 
That's what we do. So have you ever seen uh, this during this time? There's a there's an ism for everything. I challenge you to go <laughs> go to the Internet and just search the ism. Search the ism. And you, what you will find, you'll find man has created an ism. And, and, and what's behind that is a religion for every single thing you can think of. From worshiping, worshiping the Roman eagle to the spotted owl. There's an ism for everything. You know, and you take our, some of our popular ones like Mormonism. You take that. Well, that was a religion created by Joseph Smith. And I've told you before, that's not Christianity. Because one of the things that they do, they hold the written document that was written by man, the pearl of great price is the name of the document. They hold that and take that authority over the Word of God. Man, they take that authority over the Word of God. And, and the teaching does not line up with Christianity at all. So we see an ism in this society for every type of thing you can think of. We see a, a, a type of worship in this world. God has created us to worship. We are going to worship something. We're going to worship self. We're going to worship some type of, whether it's the spotted owl, whether it's nature. And that's what he's talking about in this verse, that they make these images uh, like a bird, a four-footed beast, a creeping thing and so has been the history of mankind right. this is nothing new guys this has been going on from the foundation of the world we see it the life of the children of Israel that these generation after generation has done the same thing they've created their own religion that, through man's ideas they created some kind of ism uh, so that they can have have to call their religion something and there's thousands upon thousands of people following you can go take Religion 101 and you'll learn. Just take your Religion 101 course and you'll see all the different world religions in here. All the isms of the world. It's religions that man has created. So, many generations have been through this uh, cycle of rejecting. They've rejected. They've suppressed the truth. This nation will rationalize their actions. They're going to justify their wrong to be right. And they've created a, uh, their own religion. So, again... Does that sound like the nation in which we're living? Turn over to Psalms 81, and I'm going to close with this. Do we have hope? Is there any hope for this country? Psalms 81, verse 11. This is uh, speaking of Israel. But my people would not hearken unto my voice, and Israel would none, of, would none of me. So I gave them up, you see this? I gave them up unto their own hearts, their own lust, and they walked in their own counsels. That's Romans 1 all over right there. And oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries, and the haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto, to him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest wheat and with honey of the rock should I have satisfied them. So, if we see here what God is saying to Israel, that if they had turned unto me, and look at verse 16, or um, if we see there in verse 16, I would have fed them, if they would have turned unto me, he says, I would have fed them the finest wheat, and I would have given them honey out of a rock. The key is found, though, in verse 13, and this is the problem. Israel, Israel had walked in my ways. If Israel had only walked in my ways. And what that is saying is that they chose to go their own way. The only hope for this nation is repentance and turning back to God's ways. And we see that. We, we, we pray. Uh, we pray in uh, Chronicles all the time. You know, uh, if we humble ourselves, if we pray, if we seek the face of God. And it's true. But there's got to be a wholehearted, there's got to be a majority that will turn back to the ways of God. And when God sees this turning back, when God sees this turning away, that he would feed them the finest wheat.
and honey out of a rock. That means he would give them the best. And he would take care of their enemies. He would take care of their adversaries is what he was telling us here. Is that going to happen in America? I don't know. That's what there's a big question over. So is Romans 1, the nation that we, we've been preaching about, is that America? Is that this nation? Well, all the indications says it is. All, based on the Word of God, it says it is. Now, is this nation going to turn back to God and repent? That's the big question. The, Bible, God, the Word of God tells us if we repent, He's faithful and just to forgive us. But I just, I just wonder, as we think about our country, have they gone too far? Is there bound to be judgment on this nation? You know what I'm saying? So this morning, I stand with me as we're in closing. I think in next week or so, I'm going to go back and something was shared from the message. I'm going to preach a couple of messages on the Ten Commandments. Go back to that law. We talked about it written on the heart. But I'm going to go back and preach the Ten Commandments, share with you something that's been removed from our nation and why it's important still today that we still teach our kids those Ten Commandments. You say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, they was actually restated also, not all of them, but in the New Testament, and we're going to share that with you. So this morning as we close in prayer, uh, listen, would you just join with me? If maybe you'd just like to pray this morning for a country. Uh, I don't know what God's going to do in this nation. It doesn't look good at this point. Uh, I'm thankful that I'm a child of His. doesn't mean we ain't going to feel some of the, right. the, the bad side of this judgment. But let's uh, this morning just lift our nation up in prayer. A guilty nation, a guilty world. Amen.